Hello my soccer universe. If ever there was a round to teach you to never judge after just one game of the season and that all these predictions are already wrong, this was the round. Last week I said we have already two teams in crisis and yes this was true. Altag and Austria Vienna, they were true crisis talks. I mean even the sporting director of Altag was about to fire Standfest. Well he stayed on. Altag hanging back there are the big winners of the round beating Lusk. Where I was at the game. Tell you a little bit more about that later. On the flip side for Lusk, all the good euphoria that I had after the first win of the season, you know, going in, we might actually start with six points this season. Yeah, I said it last week. I don't like to meet teams in crisis, yeah? And I was right about that one. So, didn't feel well. The other team in crisis, Austria Vienna. Yes, really bad exit in the Europa League. Followed by a loss at blau weiss Linz. Yeah, there was pressure. They turned around, get Dragovic into the lineup for the first time since he left Austria Vienna all these years ago. And I think they got a deserved win. And so it's the two losers from the last round that are now up there as the winners. There's of course one team that doesn't care about that at all. And those are the big favorites, Salzburg, who got now two wins out of two and playing some scintillating stuff after a relatively good European performance against Twente and Schede. Why did they need to concede the late goal? But other than that, this looked actually also quite convincing and there's not to say of Rapid. Rapid have been the most convincing team so far. This time they only got a draw in Kärnten against Klagenfurt. On the other side they have made so many changes because they are fully in to qualify for European group phase and if they eliminate Trabzonspor that's it for them. The Austrian Bundesliga really really needs good European performances by their teams because the coefficient is lacking. So it would be good to have at least four teams in a group stage. But it's not Europe that we're talking. We're talking about the Austrian Bundesliga and so yeah. Let's get started with the sorry show in Linz. Now that was a downer. Definitely. And it was also beautifully set up. The weather was nice, although maybe veering a little bit on the tad to hot side. My brother was going to the stadium with me for the first time in 10 years. We have been going to so many games together. We took our kids together. It was all meant to be a great occasion. And even Lusk started out well. Created chances, having a big one through Schul that was just cleared off the line, creating a lot of pressure onto Alta. But you already saw that the defense cannot handle Gustavo Santos. He always found his way behind the line. And he scored an offside goal via the inside of the post. Still, Lusk took the lead. Schul, he was probably offside, but it was not very clear because his body completely obscured the Altach defender, so you couldn't really resolve the situation. The goal counted and at that moment everyone thought you have the lead, you were absolutely dominant, you can now push for a second goal because Altach will need to open up. What was not in the plan is that Horvath plays a horrible back pass into Gustavo Santos's path, who again is running beyond the line and then can put it via the inside of the post into net, make it 1-1. Still, plenty of chances. There was a great save by Stankovic from a Jovicic shots onto the crossbar and then it did not go in. Loads of pressure. 80% of the ball was with Lusk on average. And that was for the entirety of the game. And Altach, even by their own admission, said, yeah, we were lucky to go into the halftime break with a 1-1. However, in the second half, this all changed. Suddenly, Altach set even deeper, Las could not find the solutions. There was a lot of balls played in the midfield and on the U-shape around the opposing box and Altach were always dangerous. And so it happened what always happens in these situations. You're pressing forward and then there's an errant ball played to Gustavo Santos. Laval comes out relatively needlessly. Santos goes beyond him and again, by the inside of the post, makes it 2-1. Las cannot create any chances. Yes, there were maybe two minor shots for a penalty. Never really there, to be honest. And very late on a Ljubicic shot. But it ends with a loss to a team that was already in crisis after round one. A team that is fighting against relegation. And now you have to be careful to not go into a crisis yourself. Because the next game is Salzburg. Should you lose that one? Yup does not look very well. On the other side, I also want to say it's early in the season, the team still need to find themselves and maybe they can put a run together later in the season. So, you know, hold the horses. The critics have been really, really rough on Lusk. And yes, this was not a performance that gives you a whole lot of confidence for the rest of the season. But again, it is early in the season, the team still need to find themselves with so many new players, although there were only two playing this time around. So yeah, we gotta see. I think the season is long. And always remember, you only need to make it in the top six without having too much of a gap towards the top in the playoff, the games count double. 
just a few cents that I wanna add to that game. After the game, Coach Darash actually said, you know, you played really well in the first half and probably should have taken a lead and be more convincing. Yeah, second half was not so good, but you're allowed to make mistakes, so don't have your heads hang so low. And I have to say, I actually like his attitude there. However, my brother already said ahead of the game, he didn't like what he saw from defense and he was proven right. They're a little bit too slow and they never could handle, as I said previously, Gustavo Santos. On the other side, you know, maybe this is exactly what you need. The game against Salzburg next week will probably be a completely different one, although I don't expect a whole lot from that one. And then, yeah, it could go in a little bit downwards spiral, but I still want to be slightly optimistic. This was not a good performance, but it may also have been a one-off and maybe it did not really help that you have to play in this heat and I really wonder why is the Austrian Bundesliga in the summer? Why do we insist on the five o'clock kickoff when the other big leagues have not even started? I think you could play everything at 7.30 if not later and I think it would be much better action. In parallel to the Altach win in Linz, we had also VSG Tirol, one of the big winners from the past weekend, facing Gea K. It's a game that was instantly forgettable, I would say, where Tirol mostly controlled and had the better of the game, but in the end, Gea K. could have won it very late on as well. So yeah, the point really doesn't help anyone, but also doesn't hurt anyone yet. Gea K. finally have the first points of the season and Tirol are still up there in the table as well. And they're even then ranked ahead of Rapid because they have won a wave in more than Rapid. Probably the most talked about performance of the entire round is what Salzburg produced against blau weiss Linz. The 5-1 is emphatic. However, this game was for at least half an hour. Way more open than this final scoreline might suggest. Hey, Conor Noss gave blau weiss Linz a lead that Oscar Glock immediately equalized. And yes, Salzburg was way more initiative, but blau weiss Linz scored even an offset goal through Conor Noss in the 20th minute. They had another pretty big chance. blau weiss was there to hurt Salzburg. And they, at this time, were still unbeaten against Salzburg. However, once Oscar Glock makes his second goal to make it 2-1, then there was only one winner. Salzburg exerted tons of pressure and Blauweiss couldn't really deal with it in the 64th minute Loch adds a third makes his hat-trick and then Yeo who has been another outstanding player yesterday makes it 4-1 and beats Rebladon makes it 5-1 could have gotten even uglier I think this would have been unfair because I would say for half an hour Blauweiss really hung in there and gave Red Bull quite a bit of a trouble Now Sunday late afternoon, Rapid came to Klagenfurt, made a whole lot of changes because they just uh, played this great game at Trabzon, where they won 1-0, fully deservedly so. No one expected that and yes, without a whole lot of changes, they found themselves down after less than four minutes when Bob Sin was running alone to goal, made it 1-0 and you thought, hmm, but Rapid really controlled that game. Got an deserved equal through Oswald, hit him the inside of the post. They were in full control of the whole thing. But then came one of the craziest VAR decisions already in this young season. Thorsten Mara got sent off for a foul because he was the last man. It was on the outside of the box. I'm not even sure it was that much of a foul. Yes, he puts his butt in front of the Rapid striker, but that was not really that much of a foul. And I think, yes, foul, maybe yellow card, okay but then denying a clear goal scoring opportunity was ridiculous because there was another client for player right there that could have cut in no one understood that decision literally no one except for the referees and this is something that i don't get var needs to really get better in austria they have the chance to get better it's just too much micromanaging however to their credit with a man down Klangford really fought hard and hung on to the draw yes rapid missed some pretty big chances along the way and with some luck they actually could have won this game which would have prolonged their really good start i mean they had five wins to start the season now this is the first time that they didn't win but i think there are many extenuating circumstances there as well i'm not writing off rapid i think rapid this season looks like they're for real In the other Vienna v Corinthians slash Kärnten duel, Austria Vienna took on Wolfsburg. This was kind of opposite 
ends of the spectrum. Wolfsburg had this great win over Klagenfurt, 4-1, playing some great stuff along the way, whereas Austria Vienna completely disappointed against Blauweiss Linz. And while Austria Vienna had more of the game, Wolfsburg took the lead when Azukic crossed in from a free kick, finds nobody and it goes into net. And yes, goalie Shane Radlinger did not look good on that goal. However, it was also a little bit of a deceiving lead because Austria Vienna had more of the game. You still thought that Wolfsburg should be good to hang on at least for a point. The equalizer in the 70th minute was rather contentious because there may have been a handball in the build up before the ball falls to Gruber who then puts it into the net. The referee is looking over it, doesn't go anywhere and so in the end the goal stands. Also contentious for me is Niklas Wimmer gets sent off with a red card. Again for denying a clear goal scoring opportunity again there was another man Ali was Morada on the outside. I didn't quite see it. I don't think he would have needed to send him off. Again, VAR, it's a red card. I still thought that Wolfsburg will hang on. However, laid on a crazy goal by Huskovic. I think it was again a cross in and then Huskovic deflects the ball in a weird way up onto the crossbar potentially or just below. I think also the goalie might have pushed in. I think this was an own goal if you were to ask me, at least upon a first review. In any case, Astrivena takes a 2-1 lead. It was clear that they're gonna win it and later on Fitz makes it 3-1 on a counter-attack that was really poorly defended by Wolfsburg. And yeah, Astrivena get a much, much, much needed win to keep them on track. <laughs> Now, last one was a Styrian derby between Sturm and Hartberg. Sturm playing in their golden third jerseys because they want a double. They actually look quite good, I have to say. It was not a great game. Against a lot of heat, this was kind of the overarching theme. There's a slight heat wave coming. It's not as bad as we had it before, but it is hot and, you know, five o'clock kickoffs in the heat are not fun. And so the game was rather slowish. Overall, Sturm had more of the game. They took the lead through Lavalle. Probably could have doubled it, but then in the second half, Hartberg had a good chance to equalize in the end it's Biereth after a nice cross in that makes it 2-0 and Sturmgaards get the first win of the season are back on track so for the defending champions it all looks good <laughs> Just before we look at the next round, when you look at the current table, and I just pull it out here now, you see that there are many teams on three points and Lusk, despite having a level goal difference, is in last place. It's because in Austria it's head to head first and if the teams are tied, there's a mini league form between those tied teams and then there are points taken. Well, among these teams only Altoch and Lusk and Austria and Wolfsburg have played against each other and also Blau-Weiss against Austria. So you have to take these into account. It's a weird system. It doesn't make much sense. So looking at the next round, one game really, really, really sticks out and it is Lusk against Salzburg. It's almost a must not lose game for Lusk at this point in the season. The one thing is that Salzburg have a really tough game at Enschede coming into that one so this is where I'm a little bit putting my hopes up there and also the the game will be a little bit more open but there are also quite a few other interesting ones I mean GRK against Blau weiss Linz there's maybe a little bit of a rivalry there also kind of some natural rivalry because the fan bases are from opposing spectrums Klangfurt against Sturm Graz I think could uh, will, will be interesting I think Hardware against Austria Vienna is a pretty big one as well and then Rapid against Tirol both teams sit second in the table level and points as I said Tirol just ahead of Rapid because they have the away win and Rapid has only a home win. So that was it from me from this round. I hope next round I will be able to tell you about happier results for Lusk. But hey, I will still make a video even when they have lost. I will be reporting on them and will continue this journey. In any case, please let me know what you thought about this Bundesliga round. You can give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!